which do you think is more special? I mean, that's like saying, which child do you prefer? I'm not, I'm not staying downstairs. I just went to get myself a glass of tonic, tonic water. But um, I thought today I should do a video just showing you some of my, I haven't done this in a while, my favorite um, vintage pieces. Cause you know, well, you know, that makes up the backbone of my wardrobe. It's a mixture. I like shopping a bit of designer thrown in, thrift, vintage, and a bit of like in the high street, like, you know, end of the stories and stuff. Ultimate, my top favorite pieces of vintage that I own and also how I style them and the why I style them the way I do. Let me go upstairs. I'm gonna get changed and I will talk to you more up there. Okay, so I just changed and I'm upstairs, obviously, just putting my earrings on. But um, yeah, so I rounded up some of my favorite vintage pieces. Now, gosh, this is, ah! These are the kind of pieces, I'm getting excited already. OG subscribers and followers on my blog, where did you get that? You probably know or should be able to guess what you think is going to be included. In fact, leave a comment below if you could already have a guess of what is going to be included in this video for my Hall of Fame vintage pieces. Yeah, let me know below. Just go over here, just, just grab it, hold on. So the first one I'm gonna show you, and this I got, I think it was last year, is this orange leather trench coat. Beautiful, I mean, look. God, man. Look at the lining, right? So I found this from, because I always get this guy's name wrong, his Instagram handle, so it's gonna be on the screen. It's like Biz, Biz New York or something. Have a look, it's right there. Um, you can check him out. He's actually uh, sells his pieces uh, at on Brooklyn Brooklyn Flea Market as well. And I remember when I tried this on, and I remember thinking, God, do I, I don't know, it's so bright. And I almost left it behind. Look at the stitching though on it. Look at that, look at the detail, look at that. You, I know you've seen this before. I'll insert pictures showing me wearing this on my Instagram, but it is just so good. It doesn't really work with this, but I don't really care. Because I just want to, it's so, it's just the way it hangs. It's, oh God, look at it with the lipstick. Okay, there's one tip right there. Just coordinate, because I've got like a bright orange lipstick. This is um, my Smashbox's lipstick, but look. How this is together this is so okay there you go there's one look <laughs> uh there's no picking up of one color in the other because normally on my channel um, i've talked before on videos on when you're pairing colors together to look for something that's similar like if there's orange in this wear something that's got a little orange in it like the top or whatever but there is nothing that coordinates outside of the lipstick but that's what ties this together. I'm wearing three colours only. I've always talked to you as well about one of the things I personally like to do is to only wear a maximum of two to three solid colours at the same time. And this is three of them right now. But I actually don't mind it. These are the Ganyi wide leg jeans and obviously it's white, uh, this white blouse. This, I think this actually works together. Oh, the belt, the belt, the belt, the belt, the belt. No, look. I know I've done this before, but I, this is the only way to show it. It's just, you've got to belt it so you can see. God, this is so good. Anyway, you get the point. Such a nice piece of the pocket. It's just, everything, it's just, the color of this is absolutely spectacular. So um, I think the reason why I wasn't going to get this and I hesitated because it was because of the color. I just thought it was too bright for me. But I think when you're looking at, say like you're in a vintage shop or, yeah, you're in a vintage shop, right? Or in a flea market, vintage stuff everywhere. And you're looking at a bright color and you're thinking, shit, how am I supposed to wear this? You know what I mean? You're thinking, what do I have? Hold on, I'm gonna show you. Show you exactly on the fly. Um, I paired this with, this trench with this skirt before and for the reasons that I mentioned before you can see that there's like this dark burnt orange runs throughout therefore it would work and it does at least to me this really works and then what you would do is you'd wear something solid up top here it doesn't have to be like a button down blouse like this it could be something that's much smoother because this is so busy right the skirt it's got like all these lines going on I would, I personally, like if I was to repeat this outfit again, which I probably will, I'll wear a bodysuit 
because of the temperature. This is an example of a skirt that I probably wouldn't pair with this. Now, I know that I said you pick a color that's similar or, you know, in it, so you wear with it, but I wouldn't go with this. This is a Topshop satin skirt. This that I, I personally don't like and I would not do. Now, I would not do this skirt with this. And in terms of this skirt, same thing. I probably wouldn't go with this because I think it's just a little bit too busy. I just think that this stripe skirt looks 10 times better. So use that thinking if you go to a, when eventually you go to a flea market or a vintage shop or go to one, or even looking online on eBay and Etsy. I think about, you've got this in your shopping cart possibly, or as another bright color. Think about what you've already got at home in your wardrobe. Do you have colors already in it? Oh, I'm gonna show you the next piece, hold on. This needs no introduction, hopefully. Oh, this is such a good piece. Now you see how excited I'm getting about this. I know I do get excited about my pieces, but these are the ones that should, your Hall of Fame pieces, or what I call if there was a fire and you took out already everything that was living, but you just wanted to run back in for some like pieces. They should truly be the pieces that make you the happiest of all. And this trench coat, it's, God, it still feels good. Wow. This I picked up a couple of years ago, if not three years ago, and it is possibly my favorite ever find in terms of a coat, a trench coat. Maybe even more than the orange. Oh. Actually, leave a comment below. Which do you think is, which do you think? Which you think is more special? I mean, it's like saying, which child do you prefer? I found this at Beacon's Closet, which is a chain in New York. It's suede, it has leather paneling throughout front and back. Um, I love this, somebody at the door. It's just I just love the rounded collars here. Now I have worn it before, teamed with uh, blue as well, but the blue that I teamed it with, I'll show you on the screen, it, just under the story's dress. I think that dress is still available, so I'll leave it for you link below if you like it, because I love that dress, and it has pockets. It worked because the shades, they're not, they're so much different from each other that each complements the other. But you know I'd also pair with this, this jewel-toned um, dress, which I believe is Zara. It is a forest green dress, and I quite like, to me, I love this together. Look how luxe. This, oh, this is beautiful. This is gorgeous. This is gorgeous because this is high neck. So it's playing up the vintage feel, right? It's got like a Victorian style. And then just the colors together. That, oh, okay. Yeah, I have to remember this little color. I've never worn it together. But green is a warm color. I'm warm toned um, and if you're cool toned, you, I know I read somewhere, it's quite true, a quick way to tell if you're warm toned or cool toned is just to look at the veins in your arm. Um, if they're green, then like right here where this, uh, your skin is transparent, mine are green, so I'm warm toned. If yours are more like on the bluer side, then you're um, cooler toned. To me, that is why this whole thing, this looks, I would so rock this. The, the color is so similar to a denim, um, pair of jeans this is overkill like this this pair of, of jeans they're way too dark this looks way too similar and it's just getting lost and it's these jeans aren't doing any service to this at all it would have to be something lighter because of the contrast that's that's the reason why because this is making this stand out and these jeans are making this trench stand out that is the reason why like if this was a chambray skirt which I do have I would wear that possibly with this and just wear like a white t-shirt. This is definitely one of my absolute favorite, I don't know if this works with this, but it doesn't matter. I'm just showing you the fit of this trench coat. I love this so much. Oh God, I love this trench coat. It's such a good, oh God, I feel like a schoolboy, like, you know, with the Peter Pan collar. But it's just such a beautiful piece. Anyway, so that is my tips in terms of a really bright trench coat and then something that's a bit more subdued along the sort of denim kind of line. Those are the kind of tips in terms of what kind of outfits or what kind of colors that I would pair them with. So hopefully that helps you, but yeah, definite, definite Hall of Fame piece. Okay, so another favorite. I'm not sure if I should leave this untucked. What do you think? I kind of like it like this. Like. I know this is like an interruption here, but I just sort of like the way this looks like this, like just loose. I don't 
don't know, nicely but tucked in. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to show you the next. Um, let me just show you it because it's just, it's just so good. Hold on. It is the Pendleton Vintage Coat. I found this on eBay. Now, this is something I was looking for. I wanted something that was a statement coat, lots of pattern all over it. And I knew that Pendleton did coats like this. This is a true story. Rewind about eight years ago, I ran into Pamela Love, the um, designer, jewelry designer, um, in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, on Bedford Avenue. And I was, that was when I used to shoot a lot of street style, but um, not video like I do now. It was more like just photography. And I saw her and I thought she looked fantastic. She was wearing this coat. But I ended up having a great conversation with her about vintage. And then fast forward to now, I've been thinking about looking for an Aztec type of uh, print for these particular coats. But I wasn't looking for hers. I was just looking for a coat because when it's vintage, you never know what you're gonna get. And it's, also, and it's really about looking for the right size and hoping you'll find one in your size. Um, and then I just got, it just so happens that I ended up getting this one. It is, it is stunning. How could this not be one of my, how could this not be one of my Hall of Fame favorite vintage pieces? I got this last year, but this is something I wanna keep in my wardrobe forever because I don't think a print like this dates. It is dark enough to be wearable, but striking enough to be a statement at the same time. Leather collar, um, I will list for you any other vintage coats from uh, Pendleton that I've seen in the description box. Uh, they come in jacket form as well, and they're unisex. They're just fantastic in my opinion. And a tip for you as far as like looking for anything that's like a print in a coat, like a statement coat, um, make sure that, or try to pick a print that is not about trend because this isn't this is what i call a traditional print so when you go for traditional type of prints like this one they don't date stick to those kind of prints instead don't go for anything with like lots of big lightning bolts all over it unless you really love a thing for lightning bolts um, i was so happy to find it i think it's absolutely spot on to wear um, and yeah that is my tip for you as far as looking for a printed uh, coat Definitely look for something that is a traditional print. I wear anything under it, honestly, because it is so thick and long. Actually, leave a comment below. Do you have a statement coat that is a print? You know, like, and if so, what kind of print is it? I'm curious to know what it is that you've got. Another tip for you is to buy out of season, something that's at a lesser price point than it would normally be. I love it. Anyway, give this video a thumbs up if you're liking the ideas and the tips I'm giving you, especially um, regarding shopping out of season, what kind of prints to look for, and just the kind of colors to wear with certain things. Maybe it's a statement trench coat that you've never thought of getting in the first place. Look at the material composition of everything you buy, right? But for vintage, try and make sure it's at least over 50% composition of a quality material like wool or cashmere you don't want it to be more polyester based than anything else because that's something that's just going to sweat when you wear it it just doesn't it doesn't stand the test of time you want more natural fabrics than man-made fabric all right so moving on to uh, a couple of dresses now i found this at brooklyn flea market and it is it's stunning it that's all i can say it's a beautiful i got this ages ago what size what who is this by i don't even know it just says young dimensions Saks fifth avenue do you know this is the first time i'm looking at the label it's got beautiful full sleeves this is stunning and it's just like a v front and right here has like some kind of like smocking see it's elasticated so when you put it on it just kind of stretches over onto your boobs this is such a gorgeous dress i almost want to put it on should I wear it? I feel like I should put this on. I wish this was live so you could tell me now. I'm gonna put it on, hold on. Okay, so I had to put it on. Just wanted to show you how beautiful it is. This is such a stunning dress. I think I got this about, God, it's so good. I think I got this dress about um, seven years ago, maybe, maybe more. It is just the most beautiful ethereal dress and I found it like I said at Brooklyn Flea. Now this is a piece to me that is not going anywhere. This is definitely one of my Hall of Fame dresses, hands down. Just it has 
all the markings of what I still look for today in a dress, which is tends to be, if it's not like an ultra high neck, then it's a deep V. I like those two. I don't like boat necks personally. I also like the fact that it's got like long sleeves and helps that it's kind of like full billowy kind of sleeves as well. I just should wear them undone so it just feels a little bit more less, it feels more casual. And it just has like this empire waist here so it's very like elasticated here like I told you earlier. And it goes under the boobs, that line. Very food baby friendly dress. Gorgeous faded print. Um, this is a good example of a print to me that also never dates. I mean, I've had it for that long and God knows when this was made. But to me, this print is still beautiful, as beautiful now as it was back then. Because the prints are small, I know I've said this to you before, that is why it's standing the test of time. I think if these were really big, oversized, defined flowers, I don't think it would have, um, it would just look as timeless to me but because it's a little bit more indecipherable because the prints are so tiny that's something that keeps it as a timeless piece so think about that as well if you're looking for anything or you see pieces online that's like a vintage piece that um, a dress or anything that's patterned make sure that the florals tend to be on the smaller size now because this is such a faded type of color i like the idea of contrast so this to me looks great because it's so small. I know it's black and you think, oh, black, a bit heavy for this dress, but it's a small bag, it's beaded. So instantly it brings it to much more of a, a lighter version of a black bag because it's like a summery bag, isn't it? Because of it's beaded and it's so small. So this, I would get away with wearing it with this. Reach for the Loewe puzzle. I think this looks beautiful together. And this is a size small in the Loewe puzzle. Um, I decided to get the small because I just thought that was such a nice size there's something in here what is it something rattling around but this the gorgeous with it this is an example of what i wouldn't wear with it this basket bag is so pretty this isn't vintage this is from top shop i think that this kind of you know it kind of washes it out a little bit too yeah it's just too wishy wishy washy it looks so much prettier it's a noticeable contrast but it's a soft contrast dresses pick something with a small print it will last you much longer and, um, and it is see-through but I don't think it's coming through on camera so I won't get demonetized. Let me show you the next dress I'm thinking of. This is a high-necked Victorian dress. Look at that. Oh, what? They don't make stuff like this anymore. Sleeves, high neck, long. Tick, tick and tick. Because it's so feminine, this dress, because it's so girly, I would bung on these high tops because that's just how I like to dress. I would also probably wear, oh, this is gorgeous. I would wear these, um, my floral, you know about these already, the Cecile Bahansen sandals. I would definitely wear this together because even though it's a girly-ish sandal because of the flowers, the design of the shoe is much more like a chunky, you know how I love chunky shoes. It's got that kind of chunky Teva shoe and you could just get a normal Teva type of shoe and wear it with something like this. And the reason why the blue works, hopefully you know by now, is because blue and browns <laughs> work together. This is blue, but there is brown in this. It's like a tan, it's gorgeous. So, um, if you was looking, like I said, for something that's very, very ethereal, very, very like beautiful and like, you know, very like this type of thing, I would definitely bang it on, even with Dr. Martens. So keep that in mind, how to modernize uh, your pieces. You know, you can easily find ways to update this by just as how you're accessorizing it. I'll show you as well on the screen a vintage jacket that I te teamed with this. Same thing, that jacket, it, because it's so kind of like tough, I thought it looked perfect to just dress down this dress. Another Hall of Fame piece is this two-piece men's suit from the 70s, I found this Oh, the suit, look at this, stunning. Some of you have already seen it before. Look at the stitching detail. It has like a Western look to it, which you know is right up my alleyway. Look at that, look at the back. It's got the peak of this, oh. They just don't make stuff like this anymore. That's what makes these, that's what makes vintage so special. because they don't, thumbs up this video if you agree, but they don't make stuff like this anymore. Um, now, in terms of this, okay, so it's a bright mint color. Right, so I picked it because I, I felt like on my skin tone, I would be able to pull it off and carry it off. One thing I paired this with is this shirt. So this is my aesthetic coming through. I love the idea of pairing this shirt, snakeskin shirt. That's a tip for you, is that if you're looking for something that's quite pale, 
like a pastel color, team it with a stronger color and you'll find that it kind of anchors this piece down. Another tip for you obviously is obviously check the men's section. I will always say this, the men's section, that is where you find gems like this. This is a men's suit and that's where I found it. But that's in my top three tips as far as vintage is concerned. Get something from the men's section. Got the suit from a men's section, it's a tuxedo um, suit. It comes with a matching pant with that satin line going down the leg of the pant. Great men's. Like when I go into a men's section, right, of a vintage shop, um, I make a beeline for a couple of things. Actually, three things. Four things. Oh God, everything. Um, outerwear, for sure, right? Like suits, blazers, those type of things, because it's just that oversized fit that I love. Um, I also look for the t-shirts. The retro t-shirts in the men's section, I think, are fantastic. I like the fit of some of the men's trousers. I think it's sometimes it's like so so good um but yeah those are my tips at least from the men's section i forgot one of my favorite dresses as well it's this slip dress this is beautiful um i love the cap sleeves of it detail look at that detail on the front isn't that gorgeous it's so oh it's just beautiful and there's these cap delicate cap sleeves they're becoming harder i think to find this particular style of slip dress this is great and um, i've worn it a few times around the house because it's too beautiful to not wear around the house if that makes any sense i feel like i don't want my clothes to just sit and languish in my wardrobe screw it i'm going to wear this indoors because i just don't think you need to wear necessarily you know sweatpants which yes are comfortable and the leggings and that's fine hey i i wear them but in terms of something to just a it just helps you feel better but b it also just um i don't even need a b i think a is enough if it makes you feel better to wear something like this around the house wear it i'm sorry i don't see why you can't there's nothing silly and superficial about it it's your home it's all about self motivation and making yourself feel good at this time i don't bother with waiting and leaving them languishing in the wardrobe getting cobwebs it's clothes clothes like somebody said from um, one of my street style videos i don't like to he said i don't like to treat my luxury purse purchases he was talking about luxury at that particular time but it applies the same way yeah i don't like luxury to be so precious you know i same yeah yeah because then it's not luxury right if you if you're so precious about it then maybe you shouldn't have it you know so i like to use things or purchase things that i can keep forever and use and wear, and wear yeah wear like yeah anything and, else and wear like anything else and i actually like when things are more beaten up Something resonated with me when he said that because I completely 100% agree with that theory, not just with luxury, but just with your pieces in general. Don't wait for a special occasion. Just wear them and if there's any, if there's any time to lift your mood, it's right now. So God, that was long, but um, that's what she said. The tip that I would give you is stay away from colors that scare you. So stay, stay away from like whites, obviously. The most universal colors to me are, happen to be my favorites anyway, which are dual tones. A sapphire blue, a emerald green, a ruby red. Oh, you see what I'm saying? But these kind of colors to me are just beautiful. They will work amazing actually year round when you layer thick leggings under them, um, layer them over a polar neck later on when it gets cooler, underneath any kind of blend blazer. Manish blazer and a slick dress in a jewel tone collar. That is a, that's like a match made in heaven. Those are the most wearable colors across most complexions and they're also the colors that I think will get the most mileage out of year round. So that's it, those are my favorites in terms of my haul of, <gasps> My skirt! How could I not include the skirt? It's not up here. Where is it? It has to be. There it is. I knew it. You thought oh, I'd forgotten it, didn't you? You thought I you thought I forgot this skirt, didn't you? This one. Yeah, I didn't. See, I didn't. We'll end on a high note. This is one of my favourite Hall of Fame pieces that I found. Look at that. The liquid of this skirt is just... 
Uh, this I found, uh, I think a lot of you know the story. This is a vintage Holston Her heritage skirt. And I found it um, from a woman who was selling clothes cross-legged on a blanket in front of her. She had a pile of clothes and she was selling on the street. And I saw a flash of gold underneath the heap and I pulled it out. It's one of my favorite things that I found and it's just, it's just stunning. I mean, even when I hold it under my face, see, it's almost like a re reflector. You know what I mean? I can see this, my face light, lighting up. It's beautiful. Every time I wear it, somebody compliments me on this. It just moves like, I feel like I'm walking in slow motion when I'm wearing this skirt. It, this was just about being in the right place at the right time. I will always love vintage. I've been shopping vintage in York. I was looking in vintage shops. I used to go to vintage shops in London. I used to love going to Camden, Camden Town, uh, Camden Lock in London. It's in me. It's, it's, it's in, it's running through the veins. My last tip is keep going back to certain places. If you visit a flea market, when all this is over and you go to one, then you look around and you see nothing. Don't discount it and think, oh, see, there's nothing there for me. I knew that, I knew I wouldn't find anything. That's not how vintage operates. It's, it's, it's something that you will just come across and it'll be when you probably least expect it. I've always said that vintage finds me. It's, it's not me finding it. All right, so the last part is a giveaway. Now this giveaway is actually on my Instagram. My Instagram is Karen Britchick and I am doing a beauty giveaway and it is to honor and it is for all of those working on the front lines who are helping with everything that is going on. So any nurses, doctors, anyone working in the emergency profession, medical profession, um, also essential workers, firefighters, you know, I'm putting them all in there because they're all the ones who are helping us to get through this. Charlotte Tilbury um, set, MAC set is in here, a box set. Down at the bottom where it says legends never fade, um, that is a set of setting sprays from Urban Decay. This is a Laura Mercier makeup pouch. I think this is actually pebbled leather and inside of it is a whole bunch of Laura Mercier skincare, new skincare from them, as well as makeup, Laura Mercier translucent powders over here, NARS lip glosses. There's a whole bunch of um, beauty pieces that I'm just, I'm just giving these away. Um, these are things that I have not used and they get gifted to me, but I've only got one face and I thought what better way, just in a small way, to just say thank you. Just make someone who's doing so much feel a little bit better and to just give them just something, it's a little treat, that's it. Just something for them to just pamper themselves um, when they want to eventually just sit down, just put their feet up and just like, just exhale. You know, this is for you. It's on my Instagram feed. Just look at this photo on my Instagram account and that's where you leave your um, submissions to enter. All you've got to do is be following me on my YouTube channel following me on my Instagram channel as well and you either nominate yourself if you are one of the one of those workers or you can nominate someone who you know is and it's going on for two weeks and I will be announcing on my Instagram in two weeks time who has won all of this it's open to the US only unfortunately and the reason I'm doing that is because um, I sent something to Paula once and it was a foundation. I think it was like Estee Lauder double wear or something because I love that foundation. The bottle was empty. So between here and there, the postal system, they actually opened the liquid. And that's, I think has happened with her before. And it's really annoying because anyway, for obvious reasons, I don't want to hear that they received empty, empty anything. I want them to receive exactly what, um, what is in here. All right, that is it. I will always, I think, own these particular pieces because I just feel like they're so timeless and trendless um, but yeah I think that's it I've got nothing else to say my loves good luck if you do enter for the giveaway on my Instagram see oh there's something happening on my Instagram and I want you lot to be a part of it hello guys um, I really like this filter with the wings I think it goes perfectly with this dress <laughs> Um, the reason why I'm coming on here is because I wanted to let you know about a really cool video that I'm starting to work on and it's going to be on my IGTV and I want you guys to be involved in it. So you're going to actually appear in the video. So, so in the video, I just want you to send me a photo of anything that you're doing at home that's making you feel better. 
whether it's um, putting on lipstick or just putting on a full face, or it could not even be makeup related. Maybe it's skincare, maybe it's wearing certain outfits, maybe it's sewing, maybe it's, you understand, maybe it's gardening. Show me in a photo what it is that's just helping you and is making you feel better. This video is going to be done in collaboration with Revlon and I'm going to pick my top probably 10-ish favorite photos and I'm going to um, have it in the video. You will be in the video with me. Yes, yeah, so I'm looking forward to seeing what you're gonna come up with. Um, like I said before, um, it's, this is open to anyone, by the way. This is worldwide. Um, I don't care who you are, what you look like, men and women as well. Um, you know how I am with my street star. It's, it's, I don't discriminate. Um, so whatever you're doing that's making you feel good at home, let me know. Send me that photo. I'll leave my email for you on the screen um, and just, yeah. Let me know what that is and I look forward to seeing your entries. Um, I'll be reminding you next week as well because this will be going on for all into next week. Oh, and it could be something funny as well. It doesn't necessarily have to be something very like serious or anything. So I just look forward to seeing your uh, pictures um, and yeah, whatever's making you feel good. Funny or not, it doesn't really matter. All right, <laughs> bye.